Yeah. Yeah. Hey, clap. <laughs> How are you drinking, mate? You wanna know, wait? I'll wait till you. Hi everyone, welcome to the 5 to 9 podcast. A podcast about creators, for creators, living the 5 to 9 life. What episode is this? Uh, episode 4, I think. Potentially 4, maybe we might shove it somewhere else. But. Yeah, but yeah, I think I think it's it's been good so far. Yeah. We've been having some really cool chats and the response from the first episode was really cool. I mean, the timeline for this is probably going to be... A bit weird. A bit weird, but it's alright. This episode right. is just me and Demis. Yes. <laughs> so, my name is Demis Risley and this I'm is Ben. Ichban. Ichban. And yeah, today we're going to be talking a little bit about... Uh, we well, kind of... Not a little bit, but we're going to dive sort of deeper into photography as a business and sort of how we sort of turned oh. our... Hobby. hobby into yeah. a career we asked at 529 podcast on instagram like and our instagram is what you guys want here mm-hmm. and the most common question just in q and a's in general is that people want to learn how to make money yeah i think the quote was like how do you make money and shit <laughs> <laughs> i think we should start with how we yeah talk about how we sort of started to earn money from instagram and how we started getting jobs yeah. i think we should start by saying we're both not professionally trained, trained photographers yeah, yeah was definitely a hobby for me hobby for you right yeah and then instagram kind of came around and started taking more photos and then we started getting offers and now it's a job well i think it came from like being consistent on instagram and like posting quality content or good yeah. content that people want to see and and people resonate to yeah and then i think because of social media rising and instagram and twitter like all the social media sort yeah. of everyone started to use it brands wanted to start advertising on these channels yeah and that's sort of how they reach out to people like us who sort of have a bigger following and an audience and yeah so i guess that <clears throat> that's sort of how it all began and and how it all started for us it's safe to say that instagram kind of started our photography careers yeah there's a lot of traditional photographers who started the usual way like going to i don't know photography school or like Uni, uh, and yeah then... doing the whole traditional route of like yep. getting in like an agency and yep doing those kind of gigs there's heaps of wedding photographers and exactly commercial photographers but i guess yeah it's all uh, i think everyone has a different path and like i guess this is just the path we landed on this is a a new kind of path i I guess so and i guess it it has spawned like a shit ton of photographers yeah and a lot of people want to sort of understand how to get on this path right because we don't have any formal training we didn't go to uni and they didn't teach us how to do rates and like we had to figure everything out on our own it's a whole entrepreneurial journey on top of photography at the same time yep so learning about the the business side of it and like taxes and invoicing and all that kind of stuff (laughs) <laughs> yeah so that that, <laughs> that that stuff is like a big learning curve and something we're both still learning yeah right now but we've mostly just worked it out on our own and just talking to friends who have a bit more experience than us or yeah even if they don't we just get the input and then we figure it out pretty much yeah but like i don't think you should ever ask anyone for their like specific rates just sort of like <laughs> we ask each other oh like, of course because we're, no, we're, we're good friends yeah, but yeah, like yeah. if you're just a rough ballpark or whatever like i don't know it's sort of hard to ask someone for their rates yeah like if, especially if you don't know them and or you, like you wouldn't walk up to someone and be like what's your salary sort of a little bit imp- impolite because they, they might not want to share um, yeah but at the same time because it's you don't know what people are making on instagram yeah and the whole photography thing is kind of new yeah it's pretty interesting to see how much it varies yep. there are some massive kind of instagrams yep who have a lot more followers than us and yep. they get a lot more engagement and then you find out that they're charging so little yeah or it's the opposite as well like, where they they it like disregarding kind of following like you just hear the number that they're charging it's like oh shit yeah or we should be I, charging more <laughs> or are we charging too much so it's yeah. sort of like that question always comes up yeah all right so i guess yeah so i guess from posting on instagram we started off i think doing a couple of free gigs right like that's sort of what we started doing what? like as in we started reaching out i think my first thing i did was like a daniel wellington um, that was free yeah so yeah. i reached out to daniel wellington, i emailed them and like i go hey can i have a watch yeah and i was just like kind of curious to see like the, the business side of it and they emailed of, me yeah. yeah i was like oh so many people are getting down to daniel wellington watches I, let me just send them an email see what happens right yeah. so i was curious to see so well, like what would happen from that by sending him them an email you're on the like, i'm on the low foot. foot yes exactly <laughs> you have to do 10 posts for free and yeah, yeah, yeah. handle like over all these photos 
and we'll give you a free watch. <laughs> yeah, that was all right. I had to do three, I think, for them, which is okay. Yeah, back that's in the day. their standard template, yeah. I think. After I think, that well, Daniel Wellington thing, I think... I think you should explain Daniel Wellington for, like... Because oh, okay. they've kind of gone away and that whole model's kind of, yeah. kind of faded away. So Daniel Wellington is a watch brand that's sort of grown and... Well, they started boomed. on Instagram. Yeah, on yeah. Instagram. And the whole business model was literally just to give watches to influencers and get influencers to post all about it yeah. and give discount codes and stuff like that. And then... The whole business grew from there. The, the watches look kind of not yeah. expensive, but just like, it looks professional. Yeah, yeah. A lot but of like businessmen wear, wear it today. Oh, I, like I still see. No, yeah. So then it started off as Instagram, and it kind of looked like it was worth something. I guess. Yeah. It wasn't. It didn't look cheap. Yeah. And then they kind of uh, pushed it on Instagram, and all the influencers, I guess, started using it. Then they made it into actual retail. So you, yes. you see yeah. it in like David Jones. Yep. Too. Yeah, all the stores. Like glue, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they, they have their own stores now. I think once they kind of made it into proper retail, that's when people started taking Instagram more seriously because they, they knew that you could yeah. use that as an avenue, I guess, to get into. Yeah, and then after that, there was lots of other watch brands that oh, everyone tried rose to copy. from that. Yeah. Everyone tried to copy their model because their mm. model was buy a $5 watch from China. Yep. And, and sell it for spend. like three hundred dollars. Yeah, 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 from yeah. five dollars to three hundred something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think three hundred twenty is the. Yeah, it was pretty expensive on the website. I was pretty shocked to see how much they were selling it for. Yeah. Um, and then so when they reach out to influencers, they're like, "It's uh, we're going to give you a watch valued at three hundred twenty dollars." Yeah. And you're like, "Wow." Yeah. Well, especially when you're just starting out. Yeah. Like it's like pretty wow. Well, when we did it, the whole influencing didn't really exist. Like. Yeah. That was probably at the very start of. Yeah. 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 Um, and then it kind of moved on. So from from that sort of thing, I just kept posting on Instagram. Yeah. I remember going to Japan and posting like a few like sneaker photos. So I went to Japan and I started posting sneaker photos. When I got back from Japan, I got an email from Adidas. Like personal sneaker photos. Yeah, I just shot my own yeah. like uh, Puma sneakers back then. I was wearing Pumas when I was traveling in Japan. And then I... <laughs> In the shirt. What is yeah, it? yeah, yeah. It's just a look down on my foot. Standing on yeah. tall or just... No, no, no. It's just like there's a reflection. It was in the 21st Century Museum in Kanazawa. All right. Um, and it's got Let's like a... It. Yeah, I'll show it. For the audio podcast listeners, like we're going to show content on the YouTube channel. Mm. So if you want to watch or you want to follow along, probably check out the video on our YouTube. Yep. So then when I got back from this Japan trip, I got an email from Dan... Uh, from... From, Dan, from, <laughs> from Adidas. <laughs> yeah. Um, literally like two weeks after I got back. Yeah. And so they must have seen my Japan trip yeah. somehow. And they were like, hey, we've got these new NMDs. Do you want a, a free pair? And maybe you can share some shots on, on Instagram. And yeah. That's what literally they said. And then I was like, oh man, I'm like such a sneakerhead. Yes, I, I'll, I'll do this for <laughs> sure. And I was like so excited. At the beginning, I mean, you start off doing a few a few things for free. Did you get paid for that? I didn't get paid for that. But I, I did post a few and they really loved it. Yeah. And so I guess that relationship continued. And then the next one after that, I said, I want to get paid for it. Yeah. I guess that it comes to debate like, should you work for free or not for free? It's a pretty big topic we should yeah. cover. I got a free hoodie. I got free apparel. That was my first one. And this was way before Daniel Wellington. So right. it didn't, the whole influencer thing didn't exist at all back then. Yeah. But I, I read a, like a, I think it was like a Gizmodo, like some, a Wired article mm -hmm. about this hoodie being the best hoodie in the world. I was like, yeah, I want one. <laughs> so I think what I did, I went and spammed their Instagram account. And right. back then, I'd, I'd been on suggested user list. So I was on like 20K. By spamming, do you mean just like liking a bunch of yeah, photos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then they reached out after that. They oh. sent me an email. Sometimes that works. Yeah. I've, I've done that a few times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, less so these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think it definitely wouldn't work these I days. I think these days, if you have a blue tick, maybe it yeah. works. <laughs> yeah. Because I think yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, happened yeah. a few times for me. Uh, all right. So then I grabbed my friends and I met the model for me. We just went around. I, I just started photography at this stage, so I didn't really know what I was doing. Yeah. But then I'd give them the clothes and I'd tell like it, the company was American Giant. So yep. I'd ask for clothes in their size because they're modeling. Yeah. And so I, I ended up with nothing like. Right. They're a lot smaller than I am. And I ended up with like maybe one or two hoodies for myself. But basically, I just gave everything away. Yeah. Yeah. From those shoots. One of the photos I took made it into a magazine. So right. I think doing free stuff, like you were saying before, right, it can lead to other kind of... Avenues, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. It's sort of like if you charge free rates, it kind of devalues the industry a little bit. And I think... you're it, doing work for free where someone would charge for that traditionally. I think if you're trying to get your foot in the door, I think it's okay. Once you get that foot in the door and you get more experience, then you can start charging. I did that Adobe panel. We got asked this question of like doing free work and uh, one of the 
panelists were like, yeah, you should do free work for start though. That's how it is. And then another one came in like, I respectfully disagree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's also in a different industry. So it's sort of maybe a bit different. I think it's the same for any industry. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, I was saying before. I guess there's two types of views you can take. Yeah. If you're lucky enough to be able to charge like from the start, then yeah. you're lucky. I don't see anything wrong with doing free work. But at the same time, you can also test it out. Test the water. So if a brand emails you yeah. and they say, hey, we want to give you this, can you do some, some stuff for yeah. us? You can test it out and say, hey, do you have a budget? Email back politely and say, for something like this, I usually charge X. Even though you don't, just try it out. Yeah, yeah. And let's see if, if they come back with, oh yeah, we have a bit of budget, we have this. If they say, then that's great, right? Then you move on yeah, and then yeah, you, yeah. you see how much you can push that. If they say, oh, sorry, we don't have any budget, then you kind of reevaluate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reevaluate and say, do I want to do this for free or do I really want to get paid for this? Obviously, you want to get paid, but you got to think about if I do this for this brand, will it help me get like my foot in the door in a way? Foot in the door, like experience, like what are you going to learn from that job? Or yeah. would it be good to be associated with that brand? Yeah, exactly. And how much work is involved? Yeah. The skills that you're going to walk away from that that job, I think it's pretty important. Exactly. Also, maybe I think we've been quite fortunate enough to work with brands that we like and we yeah. use most. Brands like, I don't know, DJI, Samsung, yeah, yeah. Adobe, Nike, Adidas, like all those brands that we've worked Name in the past. Sure. <laughs> no, I'm saying like, yeah, yeah. because I work in an architecture firm, I sort of have that freedom to kind of pick and choose which clients I want to work with, I guess. Like you're not going to starve if you don't take a job. In, in a way. Yeah. But I guess everyone has, the, I get, like I said before, everyone has their own path. And so, yeah, I guess for you, you kind of was a freelancer the whole time. Yeah. So did you ever take a job that you didn't want to take? I guess uh, that's a question yeah, I'm kind of I, interested in. I think so. Like when you have to choose between doing a job that you don't want to do or like eating, I think it's like yep. pretty clear that you have to. And I feel bad for a lot of people who they start down that path yep. and they say yes because they need the money. Yeah. And then it just snowballs like in the wrong direction and they just have to keep taking jobs and could you give an like a example of sort of what you you've done that you didn't enjoy or that you didn't want to do i wouldn't say i didn't want to do but yeah. it's just like you can't put me on the side like this i did some I pre, pre-wedding stuff okay i feel like weddings and pre-weddings are like the biggest kind of things that photographers think about it's the most clear way to make money yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's pretty consistent like people are getting married all through the year like, yeah you do a kind of good job in that and if you like shooting events and stuff yeah really don't. i mean i think i've i have in the past been asked to shoot events and stuff and i've done it but i didn't like it yeah and so like it you need to work. you need to try work. it out right like you need to test it out to see if you like it or not what if you suddenly really enjoy it you never know <laughs> who's gonna really i uh, really enjoy shooting a corporate event some like people drunk, might drunk office people oh, no. <laughs> so i feel like the, that specific type of uh photography job is people who are just getting through it i guess yeah 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 okay i don't think anyone really likes yeah, shooting a, a, okay, a, a concert or something maybe might yeah be. like that's yeah. an event i guess but yeah then there's pre-weddings and people like shooting weddings I yeah because you get to interact with the people you get cool portraits and stuff like that i guess yeah, yeah. but i shot a pre-wedding with a bonnie on lad yeah yeah, yeah. yeah we split it I, re- I remember you shooting a few of them like yeah a few in the past during that time yeah i think well i shot uh andy and acha yeah who will be in the podcast, or oh, Andy will be in the podcast soon, but yep. I shot them. Because uh, they're good friends of yours, yeah. Yeah, I was taking photos and stuff, so I, I took photos of them, and I just kind of famous. She is famous in Indonesia, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So well, when she posted those photos... Kind of like, around the world now. I got a lot of kind of requests from a lot of, especially her audience is based in... Indonesia. Yeah, so she's yeah. an actress, or like a... What did, she's a, yeah, she's an Indonesian, actress. A, Indonesian actress. Yeah, so she has a lot of kind of audience over there. They saw photos of her on like cliff sides. We went to like Bondi and yeah. out to the forest and stuff. And then yeah. I got more requests, but I didn't really want to do them because yeah. I don't want to go down that path. Mm-hmm. But I guess some people might, right? As in like, that's what I'm saying. Like you should try things out, even though you might yeah, not well, like it. I tried it just yeah. to see how it is. I knew at that stage that I might have to start taking those kind of jobs just to kind of fill in the gaps and make a bit of money on the side. Yeah. I think it's important to take on more jobs that you want to do. Yeah. Because then you put more effort into actually doing a better job because you like doing it and stuff. Yes, exactly. And then that will push you in the right direction of where you want to go. Yeah. But also creatively as well, which is super important. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you did the Addis job, right? Yeah. And then they kind of reached out to you again. And then you got me on it somehow. I think that was probably one of my first proper kind of... Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. How did they get me on that? I can't remember. It was me and you... You shot a bunch of influencers for them as a photography gig, not as... Oh, no, we did. Yeah. With, um, yeah it's like... with um, Federico. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his girlfriend. Well, you shot them. And, and B-Wise. I, I shot a different bunch yeah, of people. Yeah, you shot a bunch of... You shot Dan Hong yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That was fun. Mitch Orr. That was like... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was so, cool. Well, like, we had to shoot photos for our own feed as sponsored posts. Yes, but then at the same time, take photos of these musicians and designers and other influencers yeah. to post on their own feed as well. Yeah. So I guess that sort of doubled up from like a social media job to a proper photography job. Yeah, that was right? probably my first, one of my first like photography, photography gigs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can kind of transition now to like how we make money, like different avenues. Well, how, how do so, we go about doing rates and stuff for like that? Ooh, pretty green, I think. Talking about rates, right? Yeah. So you got to like, I get, like I said before, test out the waters. First, ask if there's a budget. Yeah. That's sort of the first step you should do. Yeah. Then see if there's a budget and see if they reply with a number. If not, if they reply with a number, good. Then you can see if you can push that a little bit further or you're happy with that number. Yeah. Then if they don't reply with a number and they say, we do have a budget, how much do you charge? Right? If that, that's sort of usually the hardest question to answer because you don't know how much to say. Yeah. Right? I think the first person to throw out the number gets the, yeah, the, gets the, the high ground pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you say, let's say, just say X, right? Just put a number up. Okay. Let's say, I don't know, $100, right? Yeah. For, for that one post. You got to ask yourself, are you happy to do that job for $100? Yeah. Are you happy to put in the hours for $100? If not, then you should charge more. Yeah. You should charge $300 to, to work out how much you charge, I guess, work out how long it'll take to do the job. Just like, get the basic costs down so you're not losing money. Yes. And then you add a bit on top, I guess, for how much you think your art's worth. And yep. So yeah, your you need time, to make some so like, kind of money. How long will it take for you to edit this? How long yeah. will it take for you to go out and shoot this? How long will it take for you to go on public transport or drive there? Petrol costs to get to this place. They, it, that kind of stuff all as adds As a beginner, up. like it's hard to kind of know all these things of like... Well, that's why we're doing this podcast, yeah, right? Like yeah. just to just inform people that there's more than just the cost of photography. Oh, there's like, all these other costs involved. So you, you got to buy a camera. So you can't charge them for like a $4,000 camera. Yeah, like, of course. <laughs> yeah, so like you add a fraction. So every job that you do will... Kind of pay your back. Pay yeah. Off. Yeah. But then there's also things like gear, like gear insurance. Yeah. Depending on what kind of photography jobs you need, liability insurance. Yep. You got to edit on a laptop. Yeah. So like that sort of stuff as well. All these kind of costs, like they add up. You can't charge them all at once, I guess. But it's not just taking a photo and like spending five minutes on Lightroom, which you need to pay for Lightroom. Yeah. You and need- sort of you can kind of work out. Let's say you want to charge twenty dollars an hour, for example. Yeah. That's like worse than Macca's pay. <laughs> no, no, I was getting fourteen dollars an hour at Macca's. Ah, uh, it's gone up. My my <laughs> brother was on Sundays was getting like thirty bucks. Oh, an really? Hour. Wow. Like, um, yeah. So I mean, okay. Let's say you want to charge twenty. I'm just beginners. <laughs> twenty, thirty dollars okay. an hour, right? right? Yeah. You kind of work out. You know, I need four hours to do the shoot. That's already hundred and twenty dollars. I need yeah. also location another, scouting. Yeah, planning. Location scouting. That's another two hours, three hours. Then you, it also. It all adds up hourly. Just think, even emailing. I think yeah. you spend so much time trying to organize the job with the client. Yeah. It takes but, a while. Yeah. But I think, yeah, if you're trying to like work out proper rates, like that, all that needs to be involved. That's number one. Number two is if the client says back a certain number, yeah. then you got to work out if that's good enough for you or not. Right. Yeah. Like that's and Just make sure you're not losing money first. Yeah. 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 Because I think at the start, I was giving out like kind of rates that weren't very smart. Like too low? Yeah. Or, yeah. So in the grand scheme of things, if I kept doing that, I'd probably end up losing money. Yeah. Yeah. You need to charge a premium. And there's stuff that you don't even know that it'll cost you at this time. But yeah, yeah then you realize that you're not profitable. At the same time, you also want to like make friends with people in the community. Like I guess yeah, yeah. we became friends and we started talking about rates. Mm. So like make friends to the point where like you're comfortable enough talking about rates to each other. Then you can start comparing. Say so, like if I do this job for X, then like if you get the same job you should be getting the same that kind of thing there are some people who kind of get jealous and like that kind of stuff but i think our group of friends have been pretty it's your job and you got it so Mm. i I don't get jealous i'd rather try and help you out and get like yeah i mean you've helped me out before in the past for free like just modeling and standing there or like that kind of stuff and then in the and i've also gotten you as an assistant a few times Um, i'm I'm talking like sharing rates and yeah kind of advice build a close group of friends that you can trust yeah and you should definitely try and share and make sure that they're getting paid enough. Yeah. I think also, once you know you can get a certain rate, then yeah. you sort of should never go below that again. So like, uh, there's, oh, yeah, I mean, that's sort yeah, of like variables. a, yeah. But I'm saying like as a general rule, like if you say you charge $100 for this, yeah. next time you want to try to do $200. Like or just, at least $100 again. Or at least $100, yeah, yeah. $110 maybe. Yeah. Just like, 
a little bit more, a little bit more, a little more. Then you kind of start learning that. Well, at a normal job, you work one year and then you your should, boss gets, yeah. gives you a pay rise. You There's should, even inflation. like Yeah, so you should you, get a pay rise just purely on inflation, right? Like, but then sort of... some agencies, you give them a rate this year and then they'll come back to you next year and they're like, oh yeah, like isn't your rate this? It's yeah. Like, it's changed. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was, a, there was an agency. I'm not going to name any names. There was an agency <laughs> that came to me a year ago and I gave them my rate. Nothing happened. They kind of just kind of ghosted on me. Yeah. And then... They came back to me a few months ago and I told them my rate again. They're like, oh, but I thought your rate was this. And I'm like, it's changed now because it's now a year in ahead and like all this stuff has yeah. happened. And like, now I'm... I charge a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> do you know I am? So I guess like you just got to work towards something you're happy to do something for. Like don't charge something you wouldn't, you're not going to be happy. You, you, you want to feel happy doing the job. Yeah. You want to feel nervous doing the job. Like, oh, is this really worth, you know, sometimes yeah. I get nervous because I'm like, I'm getting this amount. I should be like putting 200% <laughs> effort in like to get them the best. Like you want to feel that way. I think way. you're talking about imposter syndrome, right? Well, a little bit, but that's, like... That's where the nerves come for, for me. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But every job, you get the same kind of nervousness of like... Yep. You want to impress the client, right? Do I deserve right? this? <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It happens a lot. But You want to impress the client. You want to like, you know, make them so happy that they want to come back to you again. Yeah. Like that sort of stuff is always what you want to do when you do something creative. And like something. imagine you got a job right every time we have for me anyway i get imposter syndrome for almost every single job right? yeah yeah yep. but imagine you didn't get it that means like you stole not yeah stalled, i think so but, like i think so it should be a regular feeling even though it's like kind of shit yeah but it means that you're kind of doing bigger and better things yeah things but, that you yeah. don't feel that you deserve and so in your head you're like what do i do it's sort of like when i'm on a shoot where it's like event based or like it's time based or it's like weather based oh, like yeah, it's yeah. So super pressure. it gets yeah. super precious like it's like oh i gotta get the fireworks oh man like it's like it's if i don't get this now then it's like but sort uh, of like oh, imagine like, a guy who shoots fireworks real. like every single day yeah, yeah then he'd, he'd know the shots and like he wouldn't but, get but that kind of leads to the next point where like if i'm doing something for instagram and i know the concept i'm going for yeah then i have a little bit more time to prepare it and like go to that location conceptualize it yeah but this is because um, you've done this yeah so, many times so that's what i'm saying so, so there's like, like two kind of situations there's like one situation where like i'm prepared yeah. where i know what i want to get i know what the final result will be and there's another situation where like i'm so on, under pressure that like i'm just scrambling yeah. trying to get as many shots and trying to at the same time thinking about what the client wants and that kind of stuff right there's there's that two situations pressure and sort of a different kind of pressure pressure by lack of experience. I yes, think. yes, exactly. Just yeah, yeah, generally. I, yeah, like, yeah, I agree. We're talking with Jared, like, he's shot so many concerts, he's in the pit and he yes. knows what to do already. Like, yes, yeah, 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 he's I agree. He's waiting for it. But... Do you feel pressure when doing a social media job that, like, you know, getting the, that amount of likes, that the, yeah, you know, that shit. kind of stuff? It's, <laughs> it's annoying, like, right? We're pretty much at the mercy of the algorithm. Mm. If you post at a wrong time, if for, like, some reason, I post on, a, like, a Sunday. Yep. And everyone's out on that Sunday. They're not looking at their phones. And I get screwed because like I don't get as many likes. But I mean, that's also me bad. yeah, that one. But then there's also Instagram algorithm. If they're gonna push your photo towards yeah, sometimes you know, I do really well, and they're like, hey, look at my post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll then look, sometimes not so much. I, I, it looks yeah. bad on you if there's not enough. So let's say you get like five thousand likes per photo. Yep. Like just regularly, right? And then you post something sponsored and it gets like a thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So either your content, everyone can tell it's an ad and it doesn't suit and like you probably shouldn't have taken the job. Yeah. Or the algorithm could just be screwing you. Yeah, I get I get this question quite a bit. Like, how do you make sure that you don't look like a sellout? Like when you <laughs> that kind of stuff. <laughs> don't sell out. <laughs> well, for me, when freeze. <laughs> <laughs> I use this every day. <laughs> for me, when working with a brand, I always have to ask if it's obviously mutually beneficial. Like, if I can create content for them that fits my feed, that's sort of natural. I can show you a couple of stuff I've done for Samsung yeah. that. I would do it anyways. Yeah, I would yeah, have done yeah. anyways. When, when it lines like, up, that you would yeah. do it anyway. Yeah. And then they also want to be involved as well. That's kind of... That's sort of like the perfect situation, yeah. right? But I guess you have to build yourself up to get to that stage. Yeah. Sneaker stuff, like I thought that it would be sort of very producty and like at the beginning, I thought, it's, yeah. oh man, it's just going to be all shoes. How do I make my sneaker photo stand out? So when I did that Nike job, yeah. remember the one that was like flying and reaching out for that shoe? Yeah, like, I was. I yeah, shot it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I shot it. So the concept was the shoe was the lightest one. So like they're really light shoes and they kind of float. So I came up with sort of 
three concepts I can show you all here yeah, yeah. Um, that show that the shoes are flying and it's sort of more yeah. creative than like a, yeah you hyped me for that job to, yeah. to start with yeah exactly I'm gonna show them all here yeah um, so there was there was a few Nike jobs that I did in the past that I thought were like super cool because they gave me all the creative freedom they just gave me like oh these shoes have this sort of main topic and then well, I can get that creative they, freedom to do whatever I want they came to you with for your creativity and your idea mm, and like mm. so that's the best case scenario yeah whereas if they came to you and like we want this shot that shot this shot and this shot like it makes it easier for you but it also takes away all the creative freedom yes I guess what I'm saying is try to get jobs that sort of fit well with you even though sometimes it's really hard you can tell if you're being a sellout or not like i i think that's it. in your heart you know if you're like taking on something I've... that you probably shouldn't be taking on but i mean in the past remember the like stuff i've done for like Barocca and oreo and stuff like that <laughs> yeah think... that was my hand bro yeah why do it <laughs> like i, I got Barocca all over my hand <laughs> like idiots at like macquarie's mmc that sort of stuff even though it's sort of not aligned to what i usually do i think it really pushes the creative boundary like as because in, you had to go super creative to yeah make it, like okay yeah like if exactly. you just did like a brocca shot like that there was some i think i had to really push myself to get sort of like i don't know why i took on that job i thought i was like oh maybe a you bit of extra cash the pay the pay was really yeah, good yeah the, the pay was not bad but i was like yeah maybe a bit of extra cash would would, go, would do good and let's see what i can do with it uh, i think it's like a bit of cash and also a bit of let's if, creative challenge this and see what happens if you kept on doing stuff like that yeah it would have been i think you <laughs> would have been you'd be done yeah. <laughs> i like i've taken on a job i guess it didn't pay that well but this was also at the start of like when i started doing kind of photography and stuff so mm. if you're getting paid like more than five bucks you're kind of happy because you're getting paid for it right yeah but we it lined up pretty perfectly with what I wanted to do. So they sent a bunch of us to Tasmania. Oh yeah. And they're like, just go take photos. I was like, yeah. all right. <laughs> oh, sick. Uh, it was for James Bogues. Yeah. And they're pretty heavily aligned with like uh, Tasmania because yeah. that's where they're from. And they also got the Tasmanian tourism board. Would you say this is this was your first sort of travel gig that was? Paid? I think so. Yeah. Okay. I think I probably would have done that for free. Like, Anyways. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you get to go and like, yeah. I've taken kind of travel stuff for yeah, free. Me too, much, yeah, me too. Sometimes it's worth it. Sometimes they send you to some kind of nice location and like you can spend that time and make content for yourself and yeah. help promote yourself. and Yeah, exactly. I did the course thing for free. Yeah. Um, it was fun just to slightly like stressful chasing around this <laughs> sort of sculpture in the water because it's yeah, so yeah, unpredictable yeah. in the water. It was a fun like couple of days. And just, even though it was for free, like I came out of it knowing that well you got I, to hang out with some cool people yes. you got to go to hong kong yeah yeah you brought gareth with you yeah gareth got something out of it too he got featured on cause which is cool mm. and i met all these new people that so, like i've wanted to meet for a long time what's your yeah. advice on should you take jobs for free and or should you like start off yeah trying think, to ask for money i think if you can then try like like i said before like test the waters out ask if there's a budget wait weigh the benefits of yeah if it's worth it to you or not yeah yeah okay because if you're just starting and like say nike asks you to do something like there's no pay they come they'll email you straight away and usually they're like oh but there's no budget or like yeah they always try and like not mention pay the first few nike jobs i did were, were yeah. free, for free for free as well like yeah. so do you, do you i get mean, annoyed when they email you and like they try and dodge pay a and little like bit five little or bit. six emails in you're like yeah like they still try to ignore pay <laughs> And then when you mention it, then like they, they take a step and go, oh, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's also times where like you you push out a rate and yeah. then they accept it straight away. And then, you know, oh, I could have gone that's, higher. That's a sign that you could have yeah. pushed it a bit more. Yeah. Then, you know, for next time, how much more you can charge. Yeah. What ways can you earn money through photography and through social media, I guess? The first way is obviously doing sponsored posts with brands. They pay you to shoot something, one of their products and you okay. post it on Instagram. Right, so talking about that, right? there's the pressure of like having it perform well and like yep. it's like there's so many variables of it like not doing well yeah that you're you're a content creator you're a social media influencer if you take on those jobs right yeah i prefer or i have been moving kind of out of that yeah and like taking on jobs where i don't need to post and like i think so, they didn't even know i had a social media yeah, yeah, yeah so that yeah. that was a nice change for like where we started and where we're heading yeah so i think like having skills that translate beyond social media is yes. also pretty important Yes. You've done a lot of gigs now that like it you didn't have to post and like Yeah. It's yeah. more photography based and I've done stuff in the past or so recently if, as well. Yeah. If like Instagram disappears, like me and you'll be okay. Yeah. But I feel like there are some people who would, would 
yep. if Instagram were to just disappear tomorrow, they wouldn't have a career. So I guess what we're trying to say is try to position yourself so that when if Instagram dies or like yeah, if yeah. you shouldn't be relying on yeah, it. so you need to position yourself to have good enough work to the point or, or build enough skill set networking right? as well. So like, skill set experience network. And network yeah what else professionalism as well there's also, so many like young people who just i think also like your own channel like website that kind of stuff you have to like passive income and also your own personal branding that kind of stuff so yeah yeah i guess yeah. so going back to going back to how you can earn money one is social media posts like sponsored posts with brands right number two is photography jobs and videography jobs that like you don't need to post yeah. anything and then three would be licensing like if yeah. a, a company wants to use one of your photos for what their website or like a magazine or something like Um, sp stuff so social um, media posts we call them sponsored posts sp right you can also charge more and hand over extra content that you're not going to post for them to use so like you charge them for licensing and yeah that's how you can also earn money but when you're Um, when you're negotiating contracts for like kind of i guess bigger jobs yeah you should always build in licensing so yes yeah if you just give it like if you don't talk about licensing then you give stuff over to them yeah and then they can use it forever but if you mention like you can use it for the first like year yeah yeah yeah, yeah. or like for this campaign you're gonna chase them up though if you say a year and then like yeah but if it rolls over and they're still using it then you can charge them more yeah and like what they can use it for so is it exclusive or non-exclusive yeah so exclusive you can charge a lot because you're basically just handing over i don't even think you can use it yeah so i recently did a job for vivid sydney that was exclusive and i can't use it it's all so if you post it on your social media they could sue you i need to ask them for permission to post on my own Um, that means the price of the licensing goes up by like three fold to yeah for licensing i usually just for a base case indication of yeah. how much you should charge i usually use the getty so the you getty try and image type, calculator you go getty and you try and type in the same kind of conditions that the client yeah. wants or whatever we'll put the website here usually yeah. it's not that like useful because yeah like, i mean it just gives me a number that i could start from and yeah. then like i'll think about if that's worth it for me or if that's a little bit too much or like you gotta evaluate again well yeah there's other factors so if the client wants like 50 photos you go to getty and you look it up it's like 700 dollars a photo yeah then like, of course you're not gonna there's be a like, bulk rate because seven, they're buying yeah. they're buying 50 photos mm. you gotta think about that yes yeah. next way to make money stock photography stock yep like you, you, i'm not really into it but you are i uh, am plug for i am yeah. e-y-e-e-m yep it started off as like an, an Instagram. So like they had the whole post photo community kind of thing. Yeah. As they were growing, Instagram kind of blew up and I guess they couldn't catch up. Yeah. They have missions. So like every week they'll get a sponsor. This week's is like shoot brown things or whatever. It, right. Whatever the mission is. But then you'd like either get featured or like you'd get a prize or whatever. And so that was a way I kind of stayed on it. Yeah. Then they couldn't keep up with Instagram and they kind of needed to grow their business. So then they moved into stock photography. Right. And then anything you can upload there, you can they put it onto the market. Yep. And you make a bit of money on it. Okay. They spread your images through all the other kind of photo sites. Yeah. So when you upload a photo onto IM Market, they'll send it to Getty. This Shutterstock is one. Yeah. But Getty is massive. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so most of the money I make from stock photography through IM is from Getty sales. Yep. You get like some of the times it's like a dollar a photo yeah, yeah yeah because of the usage right like yeah like it's pretty confusing because like it ranges from like 50 cents a dollar a photo yeah all the way to like maybe two three hundred dollars yeah like a photo license they pay me monthly so sometimes it's like 50 sales of like one dollar photos so you get 50 bucks yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah but then you have like two or three that's like two three hundred bucks yeah, and then right. it adds up monthly it's a good kind of also i think my image ended up on the google wallpaper app oh really which is on every single Android device pretty much, right? right. And then I was like, hey, that's pretty massive. Like, yeah. I sh- if this was outside of uh, stock photography, I would have charged like yeah. tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. But because it was on stock photography, uh, I had no idea where it went. Yeah. And then I was like, hey, I'm going to look through all the sales of that photo. And like, I looked it up and there was like, they're all like a dollar and under. So, so you really, like, what the f- <laughs> they sold it for a dollar to Google. And, which is on every single, it's like a surf drone photos so what can you do i was chasing it up and then like they gave vague answers like man it's like it's already it's too late for one thing and i've already made a, i've made a good amount of money from their stock service so I'll, just, I'll let it go right the reason why they charge a dollar is because like on getty they have like corporate accounts which mm. they get massive discounts and they can buy photos for like really cheap yeah yeah you gotta be careful with stock photography uh, yeah post photos that you mostly don't care about yeah yeah and I think one more way to make money off photography is to 
do workshops and courses, which I've done in the past. Sell presets. Sell presets, sell prints. Um, but yeah, I guess... I'm not that, a fan of the whole print thing. But. That kind of stuff is sort of your own dri- driven thing. Like, you're, you, you kind of have to organize the workshops unless yeah. a brand comes to you and asks if you want to do a workshop with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, workshops and courses and... Um, yeah. Like, so I've done night photography courses in the past and, yeah. like, and that's how I met Pat. Yeah. Like, that kind of stuff, so... It's kind of cool. So I met talks Jam to... Tuna through one of my editing workshops. Oh. He came to one of them and... The Microsoft yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. So, it's just like those, those sorts of things add up to how you can build a photography career, I guess. Well, um, I see on Reddit, they're like, oh, this... The photography Reddit? Mm-hmm. How do I make money? Like, I really want to do this for a living. And like, man, like, there's no one answer. Yeah. And like, I can't tell you... Everyone has a different exactly path. what I'm doing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because... I don't want to tell you for one thing. That's how I make money. And you need to figure it out. You might be shit at like concert photography or like wedding photography or like... Everyone's different. Exactly. But they, right? like, everyone who's starting always wants an answer. And like, you, there's no answer. You need to hustle. It, it, the hustle is real. <laughs> for sure, it is real. Like right now, we're starting this podcast and I'm starting my YouTube channel. And it's like... We're doing like 50 other things at the same time. Yeah. And it's, it's real. Like we know that this podcast, obviously, we're not getting paid for this at the moment. But yeah. like hopefully in the future, maybe... You need to but subscribe, like, like and, uh, <laughs> if you're listening to the podcast, leave us a review. <laughs> exactly. No, for real, though. Like, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. just on this, the amount of time we sunk into this, yeah, yeah. it's a full time job. <laughs> yeah, because we're, like, we're editing everything. Trying to figure everything out and, like, yeah. learn the mic setup and, like, register the podcast and come up with all the formats and stuff. And we're not getting paid. And Every I've, single thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, like, you need there's decisions. Hey, should I have, a, like, this creative life or that creative life? And you just, gotta, <laughs> just, like, just choose. <laughs> But like all those little decisions, I think it'll take a long time at the start, yeah. which is what I'm expecting. But but I think it's also like good paid. that we're doing it together. Like yeah. as in, like if I was by myself or you by yourself, it would yeah. be like a pain, man. Like well, we definitely we wouldn't be able work. to launch this fast and do yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we weekly, committed to weekly. Weeks? Yeah, nah, I think we are. Let's do it. Let's Five do it. weeks in, we're like, ah, oh, we're gonna change it to <laughs> monthly. Podcast. I think over time, obviously, we'll get quicker at editing these and and That's we'll, we'll get a template and, and obviously we'll, we'll get better it's all definitely a passion project for sure and it's really but fun the, like i enjoy yeah, it yeah me too but like if it's taken six days like full-time <laughs> days out of my week like, i'm gonna starve to death <laughs> <laughs> i think doing these kind of personal things that like don't have a clear end goal or, like financial work yeah, it important. would lead you to something like you, you, you well, just have to hope. trust the process i guess a little that's bit that's the hope yeah like i started a blog ages ago 10 like i think it's doing okay there was no kind of clear monetary goal but I think, if, and... I think if you were posting a blog post every yeah, three yeah. days, then maybe you could, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that it's, consistency it's built, is important. I, I was like half paying attention to it and I still did okay for like the amount of work that I put in. Yeah. But there are different things that you kind of need to just chase passion projects and stuff. But when you make... think about it, like for us, mm-hmm. when you say out of everything that you do, what would you spend the most time in? I would say Instagram, right? And yeah. that's sort of why we've grown so much on Instagram because we use it so much. We put that much time into it and that's how you grow. Twitter, for example, I'm not growing because I don't spend much time on it. It's always how much effort you put in something, you always get out of it yeah. and and that sort of thing. Like You might not get anything out of it and that's fine too. Yeah. So you have to make sure that you like doing but it. It's always going to be a learning experience. So like, ask yourself why you're not getting at something out of this or like why how can i reevaluate i think you shouldn't ask yourself why you're not getting paid from instagram oh, of course of course you, they never ask that but you should have some kind of like uh, you've been on instagram for five years and you've got like 10 followers still and it's like your mom your dad and <laughs> but, so you yeah, need but to kind then, of figure then, out like what's then you need to reevaluate like yeah, yeah, what yeah. sort of content am i posting wrong or like not wrong but like obviously instagram's content is different like there's people out there who are doing so well and they don't really have much of an instagram following yeah. but it's sort of you need to position yourself to the point where like you are where you are at your best kind of thing. Instagram might not be your best, but it might be somewhere else. But you, that's something you need to constantly be finding. Well, there's people who are successful, like photographers, who are not on Instagram, yeah. or like they don't put that much effort into it. Yeah. They've also Photog- got, well, they've photography their existed story. before yeah. Instagram. Yes. And so it will always exist like outside of it, even if it collapses. Like, yeah. So that's fine. But like, Insta- you, you should kind of just use Instagram as a way for people to find you your portfolio and your yeah. body of work yeah. so you use your Instagram as a portfolio and show your skills that way um, don't really like expect money to come out of it um, but just have fun with it and just enjoy it and just yeah. like keep you can creating. do it for 10 years and not make a dime from it yeah but if, if that's you, your if, if you, you enjoy wanna, it yeah, yeah exactly. you need to be good at it mm. after 10 years I hope you can <laughs> 
but you also need to enjoy it and just not expect anything from it. But yeah. I've been getting a lot of video jobs. Yeah. I post some videos on Instagram, but then I also, I think because I put it out there that I do video also, and I, I do put little pieces out on Instagram. Yeah. I have some views on YouTube, but like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not fully, but I still get jobs for video and stuff. Your Mavic video has a lot of views. Yeah. And I think your Japan video has quite a bit of views too, right? Yeah, but like enough to get me jobs and stuff. That's kind of yeah, it's surprising. getting you jobs. Yeah, yeah but th- I think why I'm getting video jobs is because like I'm projecting out that like I'm a filmmaker. Yeah, and I think even if I show little bits and pieces on Instagram and on like on my kind of outwards projection of my brand, I yeah, guess yeah, yeah. people know and people if they see that I'm a filmmaker, they'll go try and look for my stuff. You were saying the other day that like this next job that you're gonna get you're gonna be working with, with like some really big director or something and uh, you feel like i haven't said yes yet. oh okay uh now i think my, my what i'm trying to say we can cut to that yeah, yeah, yeah. My, what i'm trying to say is that like you was telling me that like you they think you're a filmmaker even though you've only made like three or four films right yeah, yeah. so that's sort of the imposter syndrome coming in but i think you just have to trust Very yourself much. like trust yourself to know that they selected you for a reason learn you know? to learn yeah you need to know how like your brain takes in information how like you people do poorly in school because like it just wasn't meant for them mm. but i think pat was mentioning like, yeah 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 so then if you can find out how you best learn and how you best kind of get good at things i guess then, yes. then you can kind of do anything yeah i think so i think so like well, figuring it out like, like to me instagram is sort of a little bit of a game yeah like for me like how do you game it so that like you grow or like how do you like i mean obviously you turn it to, into a career from yeah. like us just playing around pretty much <laughs> but it's fine to play around like, yeah, like yeah, what yeah, i'm saying yeah. like but at the same time you gotta have that other mindset could i turn this into a career yeah. as well that's if um, you want to some people yeah, don't want to exactly it yeah. turns into a job and then like they they don't like it anymore yeah talking about videos right like my i made my first tasmanian video mm. so i was on that james berg's job and I, I went there with the intention of trying to learn video yep because i had some kind of interest in it yeah and so i filmed a whole bunch of stuff like everything was on auto i didn't know what i was doing most of the best clips out of that video are like from an iphone right and i didn't know what like fps was i didn't know anything but then i made that then i really liked the feeling like after putting it out so then i did a road trip with mario and chino the sydney to melbourne one yeah yeah and uh lexus gave us a car and we drove all the way around and stuff yeah i made a video from that I guess it kind of got a little attention, not yeah, really. It, it, it's got a few views on, in, but on YouTube. That was pretty much it. And then I, like, from there, I got a job to shoot a video for Canon. I was like, <laughs> uh, so how, how does someone go from two, like, making an <laughs> iPhone, like, mashup travel video, yeah. and then, like, trying to make a proper video into, like, so then Canon, and then yeah. I got a, the DJI job. Yeah. And then I'm a filmmaker now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, then Four in Japan and, as well, and, like, yeah, that was a passion project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I started getting more kind of like uh, yeah, commercial yeah, yeah. work. Yeah. And I had to figure it all out. But I guess it's the same in a way. Like the past few weeks, I've been making YouTube videos and this yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I'm starting to learn like yeah. audio levels, FPS. Don't knock the table. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got some complaints about our, our first episode of us. Like <laughs> we just got this new mic as well. So yeah. It's 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 been alright. I think. I'm so, getting another one, so hopefully we'll get a better system. So this podcast is costing us more than we're making. <laughs> yeah, well, that's an investment, right? Hopefully. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun investment for sure. Well, like I enjoy doing it. So like this is an opportunity for us to like pull people we like yeah. into the podcast and having a chat with them. Professionalism and communication skills is so important in this industry. Mm. Um, being able, If someone thinks you're a nice person that does great work, you're yeah. probably going to get more jobs than someone who does great work, but also they think that you're not a nice person. Be polite, be respectful to everyone you meet. Imagine I'm a marketer mm. and I have to run this campaign of you shooting it and you're an asshole. Yeah. It doesn't matter the work you're putting out. If I'm told by my boss, I have to hire you again, I'm like, F- this guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, that. <laughs> like this guy, I have to deal with him for another like four weeks or yeah, however yeah. long the shoot is. Yeah. Whereas like, if your work was not as good, but then you, like, I really liked you and we went out afterwards, we had drinks and like, we kind of got along, yeah. then I would be more inclined to work with you. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I think the people you deal with, if they're the decision makers, it's, that's super important. Mm. Cause if my boss was telling me to work with you, I have no choice, but yeah. like, if I'm the person choosing, then networking is important. Networking Maybe. is very important. I mean, you were saying in a, in the first episode, you were an introvert. You just have to like yes step to out of your yeah. box, step out of your comfort zone to talk to people and just have a chat. That's the first step, just chatting to people and not being afraid of meeting new people. I see some people at Instameets, they're like hiding in the back. Mm. <laughs> you have nothing to lose really. Like, yeah. You need to if go they, talk to people. If they don't like you, then you just talk to someone else. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> if no one likes you, you just leave. <laughs> no, but like if you, if you just don't vibe with this one person, there's so many other people that you could talk to at events and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like, I mean... I don't think we're the best at networking. I don't think so either. And yeah. There's other people who we yeah, know the, that are like really a good lot at it. better. I think I've gotten opportunities by saying yes to things. Yeah. You say yes to things, not knowing what will happen, but the more times you say, say yes, it like leads to actual events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I remember we, me and Pat, we got an invite to go to a Microsoft dinner. Yep. And then Pat was like, oh, like, Pat's a massive introvert, even worse than me. <laughs> He's like, oh, I was like, come on, Pat. Like, because me and him were the only ones who got it, right? Yep. Out of our friend, friend yep. group. It's a, like a dinner and they yeah, come with me, let's go. I, I think I talked him into saying like, we should say yes more to things. Yeah. And he was like, all right, fine. <laughs> we went and then had the dinner. They split us up. So I was with a random bunch of people. He was with random yeah. people. Just like a random dinner with like a product launch or whatever. Yeah, and you both got Microsoft jobs from it. Well, yeah, then I went back and like I was drinking the next week with Sark and then yeah. I got a call. I was pretty drunk already and they're like, hey, how would you like to go to New Zealand like, oh. and get helicoptered onto a glacier? I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if I had not went to that dinner and said no, then that wouldn't have happened. Well, Pat also went to yeah, yeah, then they South Australia, right? Yeah. Is that South Australia? The, the salt yeah. lake place? Show content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and then that came out from that one dinner, which is really cool. But it happens, not, that's not an isolated case. It happens a lot. Yeah, 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 exactly. It was a similar case of how I got uh, like the DJ gigs and stuff. Yeah. It's the same, say, s- similar story, but like... Say, yeah. say yes to things yeah, more yeah. than you say no. Yep. Meet people. When you go to these networking events, don't just like, just stay in the corner, drink and then leave. Yeah. yeah. Um, if oh. you, we're going to be asking a lot of questions. So you should follow us on Instagram at Demis at Ichiban. We'll ask on our stories, but we'll also re-ask the questions at 529 podcast. Yep. So if you ever have any questions you wanted to kind of ask, even just to say hi, you can yep. drop a comment or question or whatever. So yesterday we asked our audience if they have any questions for us for this episode. Yeah. So off two lands, our friend Flo yeah. and Amberly um, yeah. asked, do you guys shoot together on projects <laughs> for clients or are you yet to collaborate? Like I was saying to you before, there's not often that a brand or a client needs two photographers to mm. work together on something. Yeah. But we have worked on stuff together. He's yes. hired me for that Nike gig. Uh, I was, yeah, we've, we've done stuff together in the starting past. to learn video and then he hired me for that. And then yeah. like, we've also worked with Adobe and then we've collaborated together quite a bit on that. You've probably seen all that stuff on Instagram. Yeah. He also asked a question on my one. Oh yeah? On following trends versus staying true to your style. He's asked this question twice. So he must be... <laughs> I probably think, answer it this time. I think you can follow trends in your own style. You can do both. I don't think you should follow trends at all. Like I was saying, like if there's Game of Thrones out, and I'm a fan of Game of Thrones, yeah. right? That's not a I, trend though. It is. It's a trend. As in like, it's a trend in the, in society. No. Like I'm talking about that sort of, those sorts of trends. Those are like trends that kind of move on. Like it's not, yeah. whereas like my perception of trends is... Like beach drone photos or something. Or like if, if it's doing well, you keep doing it, doing it, doing it. That kind of yeah. stuff. Fairy lights and that kind of stuff. But you know that it's going to get likes because it's in trend now. Yeah. And then you go out and buy a fairy light. If you like it, then you should do it. But if you're just trying to copy someone, then you shouldn't do it. Yeah. I would personally say avoid if trends you, if, if you, you can. Li- if you try it out and then you think it's sort of because of the trend, then you probably shouldn't do it. But if you try it out and you come up with new ideas and new concepts from it, then yeah, that there's might no be harm in that. Yeah. But generally trying to stay away from it and ahead of it. Because trends... A trends because they are in for a while and then they're out like i think my best performing work has been the most sort of original stuff that i make yeah like the plane in the forest one like i because obviously it's photoshopped and yeah. it's not real yeah. so like but it challenges people to think that it's real so that's those, why it kind of went crazy yeah so like that kind of stuff is the stuff that always does better so i don't like that people on their instagram feed they keep doing things just because it gets like so there's a whole bunch of like drone accounts who they just do drone shots and it's just they're Photos probably outperform my photos. But yeah. like really, when you look at your feed, it's that one photo that you're just <laughs> rotating and cropping in, like yeah, reposting yeah. in. Like, yeah. In the long run, no one wants to see that shit. Yeah. I don't want to see it. And yeah, like, yeah, you know when like they keep reposting the same shot that it's sort of like... If you like portrait photography, for example, which never does really well, unless like you started off that way. Like if you like portrait photography, you just post it. Yeah. Don't be afraid, I mean, to, to not get engagement or whatever. Like, it's just, you're yeah. just trying to show your personality and your portfolio onto this platform. You know, you, like, it's fine. Yeah, but if you build a narrative and you build a connection with the audience, yeah. I think they will follow you wherever you go. Exactly. Or yeah. not. Yeah. Well, Next question. <laughs> so, Matt Lambley asks, elaborate on how Demis got at Demis as a handle, please. We've said this in the past. My Instagram <laughs> used to be at Demis Risley. 
I was just like mucking around. I was like, what if I get at Demis? Like I just started searching and who you, had it? You saw that because like you saw Lee Yi Kit get YK. Oh yes, so I saw Yi Kit got YK so, and I'm like, this is really cool. Maybe I can try get a shorter username. And I thought, let's just search for Demis, which is my real name and my first name. I typed it on Instagram and I found that he was this Demis. guy. D-I-M-A-S. His name's not even Demas. His name is Dimas. D-I-M-A-S. And he... Hey, shout out to Dimas. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Dimas. If you're listening to this, thank you so much. I was kind of tracking him a little bit, like, for a few months. He had 10 photos, and he, and he was on private. And I checked a few months later, he still had 10 photos. So he wasn't very... I thought he wasn't very active. You can still have 10 photos and, like, be liking stuff and just yeah, not be posting. Yeah, exactly. I tried try to send him a DM on Instagram, and he didn't reply. So I kind of just tried to stalk him on Facebook. Yeah. And so I found him, luckily, because his profile picture was the same on yeah, both Instagram yeah. and Facebook. So I sent him a Facebook message and I said, Hey Dimas, my name is Demis and I'm a photographer and this is my Instagram account. It'd be really awesome for my business and for my growth as a photographer to be able to have at Demis. And I told him, like, straight up, being honest, would you be willing to give up your name? You didn't um, even offer him money, eh? No, and then I said, if you want money, I can pay you as well, yeah. right? I think I sent this same message about three or four times until he finally replied to me. Did you try and add him as a friend? No, I never did. I never did. <laughs> I would have, but... <laughs> he replied to me and said, I don't want your money. He said he doesn't want money. Which is strange. Um, like... He's in Israel. Um, he's in... As if you wouldn't want free money from yeah. a stranger. I don't but know, then, though. He, yeah. he seemed like a nice guy, right? He said, I don't want your money. No. And I just kept asking him, like, oh, it'll be really awesome. Thank you. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, in the yeah, world, yeah. but I just kind of... essentially. Persistent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> badgering. And then... <laughs> He finally said yes, and then I said to him, could I just, just hold on to it? I will get someone from Instagram to help me make the switch. Yeah. And he said, okay. So he, so we kind of left it. So then I emailed Instagram to make the switch, and they didn't want to do it because they said if they he's did it active. for me, yeah, yeah. they did it for me, they have to do it for everyone else. And he's still also active, so they can't just like cut his account. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, so we got to do it manually. So he has to change it himself from his end, and I have to jump in and get it. So I, I didn't want that risk. That's why I went to Instagram. At this point, he blocked me on Facebook because I think it was, I was annoying him too much. I would have blocked you like <laughs> And then I just like, hey, Dimas, I just talked to Instagram and they said they couldn't do it for me. Would you be possible if we do it manually? And he blocked me, so he didn't answer me for, like a, for year. like a year. And I just kept sending the same message every two weeks or three weeks. And I was like, and then after a while, I gave up. I was like, oh, maybe it's over. Yeah. Then I don't know. I just had a sudden spark like a few months after that. And I was like... Let's ask him one last time. And then I asked him the same thing. And he's like, man, you never give up. Hey. And then he's like, <laughs> and then I was like, he's like, okay, fine. Let's do it. And he finally changed it. So lucky. It was so. You should send him a print at least or something. Well, I, yeah. I think he's blocked me again now. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I think he's, he doesn't want any part of me. Jam Tuna. Yeah. Uh, ever thought about going back to full-time role? Uh, never, I think. Full-time, like as like in 9 to, to 5. Regular back, role. back to 9 to so, 5 instead of 5 to 9. <laughs> why do you, we invited you on this podcast, James. Like, why would you ask? <laughs> <laughs> You're not coming on anymore. <laughs> no, but like, as in a full-time non-photography role, I would never do that. Mm. I wouldn't even accept unless they paid me like a shit ton. Right. Like a creative photographer, yeah. whatever role in like a company. Would you ever... I don't know. I've seen people, some people do it and like it kills their kind of creativity. But if they paid me a lot, then obviously I think there's always a I was asking number. myself this question yesterday, actually, because I'm part-time now. Yeah. And I was thinking like, you know, I was reading all these articles about yeah, how yeah. Instagram, social media, like... It's kind of dying and it's stuff. It's kind of dying because they got rid of the likes. I think it's correcting itself. So it was like on a big sharp like, yeah. uptrend and then it's like going yeah. back down and it's going to like level off. Maybe. Or but uh, anyway, there's all these articles <laughs> that you were sending me yesterday about how social media marketing is dying and influencer marketing is sort of on the on the decline yeah and so i was thinking like Pe the, the article said people are like companies are pulling money back from the budget of social media influencing mm. or whatever mm. and they're putting it back into like traditional billboards and yeah so yeah. i was just thinking about it i'm like maybe i have to go full time again if i'm not getting enough jobs in photography but, but i don't know like let's I, just, I just say, have like, to keep pushing it and see what if, happens if nike gave you a full-time role as their creative director photographer mm -hmm. would you take that I don't know. Get, I'd get sick of shoes. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Like, I like wearing shoes. Yeah. I don't know if I could... Yeah, I don't think so. Because I, I always want to be creative myself. And, like, I don't want to have a shoe always in my photos. Like, as in... Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I think... Be that guy. It'd be different. But I think if it's either I keep working architecture, either I do both. Yeah. Or I just do photography. So that's my two options, I think. Yeah. For me, I think... I've been doing it for a little while now. As a general tip to freelancers mm. this goes for every industry like save money 
and I read an article where like they were saying you need uh, like a FU fund yeah because yeah. uh, I think it helps like when you don't have to take on shit jobs or jobs you don't want to do like yeah. it, having a having a savings kind of helps yeah yeah banking it up yeah so definitely save that you never know when your next pay is going to come in sometimes I think my yearly income is a good amount yeah but sometimes I get paid like 50% of my income in like a month or whatever. Yeah. And so for the rest of the year, like I don't have any income. Yeah. It's good to have that. Like at the end of the year, you look at your tax return and it's like, you, yeah, you're doing all right. Um, we yeah, we kind of already answered this one. Um, the engineer who bakes asked, do you guys get anxiety from paid jobs when you started? If you so, how'd you overcome it? So I guess we talked about this about yeah, yeah. how like you do get nervous from the pressure. But I guess it'll be, it'll be weird you if you, it, yeah. yeah, but it'll be not ideal if you didn't get it yes because we're self-taught and no, we had no idea what we we're doing from the start yeah even and everything uh, even the one i did recently untold the the fashion shoot that yeah, i did yeah, that yeah, was yeah. like so out of my comfort zone and i was so anxious i was like, like you know how to work a camera but like do you know how to take and shoot apparel? models and shoot apparel like and then at shoot the end models of it, is easy like professional oh uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's much easier than non-professional models but yeah, yeah, i'm yeah. saying i haven't really shot male models in the past so like directing them like communication that's sort yeah, of the yeah, next yeah. yeah so i was really anxious but at the end of it you just kind of like go all out and show that you really care about it and that's how you overcome it and then at the end of it the the client was really happy with the work and i think the really difference cool. is that, like people can wing things and like make it work mm. And like those are the successful photographers yep. versus the ones who try and wing it and fail. Yeah. But failing is okay too, but as long as like your wins equal more than your losses, I yep. guess. At the start, even emailing people, I was had imposter syndrome. Yeah. Like, why are they talk to me? And like, yeah, yeah. what do I say? And I would stare at emails for ages, like trying to make sure my spelling's correct. Mm-hmm. So now I don't even like read it through. Yeah, them. you just send it. Yeah. yeah. Even the, there's mistakes or whatever, <laughs> I don't care because like they know what I'm talking about generally. Yeah. yeah. They got one more. From Jam Tuna. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he doesn't get another question. <laughs> Charlotte Lee. Yeah. How do you choose your travel destinations? Um, you travel like personally. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm like, doing. A, do a, I'm about to do a travel destination, personal yeah. destination. So we just, uh, my wife and I, just pick locations we want to go to. This year, we're going to Chicago, New York, and I've wanted to go to Chicago, New York for so long. Yeah. And so I guess we're like, let's just do it because we have the opportunity to do it. Budget is one. Desire to like, where do you want to go? I think you like, can go anywhere. Yeah. It, Iceland's really expensive. Yeah. But I think if you want to go there, like people are like, oh, like, I want someone to pay me to go. Like, no, you just... It's never going to happen. <laughs> like, even if it's going to cost you two years to save up to go. Like, yeah. It depends how bad you want something. Yeah. If you want it that bad, you work double shifts. You like stop yeah, drinking save coffees. Up. You... Save up for it. Um, and so you can go anywhere. But you just need to make that decision in your head. My theory of traveling, right? No, it's my philosophy, I guess. Like, yeah. You're not going to have enough time in your lifetime to see everywhere. Yeah. And so I think you need to be kind of mindful of where you want to go. Yeah. And then I go to Japan once and they keep wanting to send me back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is fine. Like Any opportunity to kind of go to Japan is fine. But I think at some stage you need to start making decisions mm. of like going to new places. And Mm-mm-mm. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Uh, you can if you're f- listening to this podcast like uh, by Spotify and iTunes, could you leave us a review? Yeah, um, or follow us, us on out. Spotify, I guess. Yeah. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe and the like button and comment any questions you want to you want us to answer for next episode. Yeah, ask us questions. This guy replies to everything. Yeah, you'll see yeah. that I've been replying it's to everything. Pretty annoying because I get email <laughs> notifications for everything he replies. And... Um, yeah. So thank you for listening. Um, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Is that everything for the end part? I think so.